What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon video. Usually I say Sword and Shield or VGC or whatever, however today we're going to be taking a look at the second trailer for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, obviously that's Gen 9. Uh, before we do that, if you guys enjoy the same point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily content. Uh, but obviously I am a competitive player, so I'm going to be taking a competitively skewed look at this. Obviously as well, we don't see too much as far as mechanics go, but we do see some things like UI, we get to see some Pokemon, and we also have some info uh, about the new Pokemon uh, and a couple of abilities, so we can speculate on that, so that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. But yeah, uh, first off, let's start off with uh, the Gen 9 gimmick. We don't know what it is, hopefully it's nothing, but what I will say is this character has a bracelet on her arm. Um, here. This character has a bracelet on her arm. And that is mildly concerning because we don't know what it does. Uh, she, it says that she is not very good at throwing Pokeballs. So maybe the mechanic is you can miss throwing your Pokeball and then you lose automatically. That'd be very cool. Uh, but yeah, I'm thinking it... I don't know. It's been a generation since we've had Megas. Like we skipped a generation with no Megas and that could have been because of Dynamax. Uh, but also... They explained Megas not existing prior to the Gen 6 games, but still existing in Auris, uh, by saying that there was some kind of like multiple timeline thing, like a multiverse. Uh, so they left it on the table. They said, hey, we might come back to this someday. It could be as soon as now. Like, we might come back to it now. We might be back in the Mega timeline for this game. Uh, and in my opinion, I don't miss Megas that much, but I think that there's so much marketing and hype surrounding them, and they're, they're so, like universally loved by the fans it's it's one of the best received gimmicks yet that like i don't know I, I i don't see them like avoiding megas too much longer i think that they want to come back to it as soon as possible because it is very good for marketing and it's also just a fun little mechanic um but yeah i mean i wouldn't mind there not being a mechanic competitively because i i didn't like dynamax z moves felt kind of eh they were very annoying at times like having um <clears throat> having a Heatran be able to one-shot like a Swampert, which which should normally beat it unless the Heatran set up Sun and goes for Solar Beam, uh, but having like that one-time super powerful Bloom Doom uh, was pretty annoying to have to deal with. But yeah, I, I wasn't a fan of Z-Moves, definitely didn't like Dynamax. It's very hard to top that as far as like badly uh, or poorly uh, implemented mechanics go in like competitive games. Uh, that, was, that was pretty poorly balanced, uh, and I'm excited to not have to play with it uh, in a couple of months, so yeah, uh, as far as mechanics go, that was the first lead, but also at the end of the trailer, we actually see like a stained glass thing, and there's a big stained glass motif in the branding, and also they just have like this thing fly at you, so for all we know, like that's, that's huge, that could be like a big hint as to what the mechanic's gonna be, we are probably gonna get a lot more trailers in the next couple of months, uh, but we could also go the Pokemon Legends Arceus route, where we got nothing, except for like, one trailer right before it came out or on like the day of so yeah they're they're, they're pretty conservative with um trailers at this point in you know pokemon's franchise history uh but yeah uh as far as pokemon go in the trailer we saw a couple of new reveals uh we see for one we also get to see like the 3d models for all the starters uh Foy Coco is adorable uh, but here we see a new electric type pokemon some kind of rodent i think the website said it was a mouse uh, but yeah, uh, we actually do have info on that one right here. Let me go to the homepage and to the Pokemon. So that one was called Pommy and it's the regional rodent. You can always dis uh, distinguish the regional rodent from other random electric types because they have the stupid little circles on their cheeks. Uh, it's the po it's the Pikachu clone, but this one is is kind of cool. He's, he's a little chunky, you know? Uh, it says that he's just like, you know, standard electric type, it, the insulation from the fur is good for its, its you know, for keeping out the cold. Uh, it has static and natural cure, which is really interesting. It's pretty chunky, so I'm actually thinking like, as far as like regional rodents go, we've never had a super defensive one. They've always been offensive. And with this thing saying like, oh yeah, it's insulated and one of its abilities being natural cure, we could have like a defensive Pikachu clone, like this thing might just turn into like a big giant rat, which I would absolutely love. I love rats. Um, and that'd be awesome. Like 
imagine if this thing kept natural cure and it had like a really high HP stat and decent defenses, but its offensive, but its offenses left like a lot to be desired. That'd be kind of cool. Um, electric as a defensive type is sort of in the middle of the road. It only has one weakness in ground, obviously, uh, and it gets hit by neutral by a lot. It hits, it gets hit neutral by a lot of things, but it resists flying and it resists steel, which are two of like the best offensive types in the game. So that's pretty cool. I think that's actually really interesting as far as like what it could end up being. Going back to the next one, we see Lechonk, which opens the door to a possible evolution of Lechongus, uh, and that's that's all I truly want. Now this one, I also hope is a big boy. Uh, it has Aroma Veil and Gluttony. Now Aroma Veil uh, is actually an ability. I believe Aroma Veil is the one that blocks Taunt, and Sweet Veil is the one that blocks. Um, Sweet Veil is the one that blocks Sleep. So. Uh, Aroma Veil being able to block Taunt is actually pretty interesting as far as designs go. What you'll notice is that as the generations go on, uh, the developers for Pokemon are getting more and more invested in developing Pokemon that are competitively viable. Uh, that's called Power Creep as well, like we see a lot of Power Creep. Uh, so this thing is described as being super muscular despite looking fat, so it's probably going to have a sky high attack stat. Right now it's just a normal type. Um, I don't know what secondary type it's going to get. For all we know, this is the Route 1 Rodent equivalent of the game, uh, which I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind if this is the Route 1 Rodent. We've never really had just like a pig, and a pig isn't a rodent, mind you. Um, well, I guess, is a raccoon a rodent? I don't know, but you know, we usually have like things that you just see on the street, like raccoons, squirrels, um, miniature hyenas in Poochiana's case, I guess, whatever. Point is, uh, like this thing is probably gonna be very common, uh, I'm hoping that when it evolves, it becomes pretty, like, physically defensive and, um, you know, physically offensive. It's probably not going to be a special attacker uh, when they describe how, you know, gluttonous and, you know, strong it is physically. So, yeah, uh, gluttony is a pretty awesome ability. Uh, Pokemon with gluttony tend to do very well. Snorlax, Alolan Muck, other gluttony Pokemon that are slipping my mind right now. But, yeah, they have a very good track record for being viable. For one, you can eat pinch berries a lot quicker. Um, two, you're able to, well, I guess that's really it, but also it, it just helps out, it helps out a lot defensively. If you can have like a figgy berry at 50%, there's no reason to run a citrus berry. Uh, if this thing gets like recycled, that's pretty nice, you know, especially if it's like a super defensive Pokemon, you'll be able to wall things out pretty well. And with Aroma Veil, you're not going to be able to be taunted from using moves like Toxic, Stealth Rock or anything. It's, it's kind of cool. So yeah. Also, Aroma Veil helps like both your teammates I think actually let me double check I don't want to be stupid I don't want to be stupid here let me see Pokemon showdown down for maintenance that's the second day in a row I've done this wow okay but yeah no I'm pretty sure Aroma Veil is the um ah, I'm gonna double check I'm gonna double check Aroma Veil uh da, da, da. yeah that's the one that blocks taunt and it's only really given to like fairy type Pokemon so maybe this thing will end up being a fairy type that could be kind of cool a normal fairy uh, I don't know if we had that typing yet, so yeah. <clears throat> uh, next up, the third one is small live, and let's just point out that small is like that's like that's like a recent slang. I, I don't know if it's slang, but it's like oh look, he is so small. That's like a recent thing. Same with um, what, what's his name? Sa same with the guy that we literally just looked at, Lechonk. Chonk isn't really a word, it's so much as it is like a meme. So. Whoever's naming these Pokemon for like the English translation like you, you guys are on point right now So that's awesome. The only ability that we see is early bird However, what I will point out is we actually likely see the evolution of this thing in the trailer if you look closely towards the end right there um, That doesn't look like a slow that doesn't look like a sunflora, but it could be like a regional sunflora um, We actually see a few of them outside the The arena. Let me see if I can get a, a better look at them yeah, so there's one down there and there's one up there. Those are definitely alive. They don't look like plants. Uh, well, I guess they do look like plants, but they look like grass types. So that might be the evolution or it could be some kind of like Sunflora uh, regional variant. Uh, I This thing's grass normal, which I don't believe is a type we've had yet. For the longest time, I thought Go Goat had that typing, but apparently it doesn't. Um, as a grass normal typing, it'd be able to be immune to ghost. It's weak to fighting and flying, uh, bug, 
And yeah, I mean, the normal typing really just adds a ghost immunity to it, but I guess it also gets stab on things like uh, if it wants to be a special tech or hyper voice is kind of cool for a spread move. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know what this thing's gonna end up being. It could be, it could be kind of cool. Now, taking a look at the big boys, the big boys, Koridon and Miraidon. Now, I saw on Twitter that Korai refers to like the past and Mirai refers to the future in Japanese or something like that. Uh, and we don't get to see any abilities on these guys, but it says Koridon is a legendary Pokemon you can meet in Scarlet, Miradon is a legendary Pokemon you can meet in Violet. These two Pokemon are said to have powers that far surpass those of other Pokemon, but details about Koridon and Miradon are still shrouded in mystery. Why are they shrouded in mystery? Because Game Freak won't tell us. Uh, but Leaks did say that this would be like Dragon Fighting and this would be Dragon Electric. So, I mean, like, just design-wise, yeah, I can see it. I would prefer Dragon Steel, to be honest, though. I think Dragon Steel is a lot cooler of a typing for the right one, considering it looks like it's made of steel, but also it has little lightning bolts for, you know, horns or whatever you call those things. Uh, so, yeah, as far as, like, those typings go competitively, Fairy absolutely dunks on both of them, especially uh, Core right on there. Uh, however... If it has enough speed, or if it's like bulky enough, it can get by it with like an assault vest. This thing looks like it's gonna be bulky. It looks like it's gonna be, you know, on the left here we got a physical attacker, on the right we have an, uh, a special attacker. I think if anything, if we want these legendaries to be viable, they need one of two things. They need absurd stats, like Zacian, uh, or they need an absurd ability, like Zacian. Uh, so. I mean, dragon types are already pretty oversaturated as far as um, legendaries go. We got Dialga, Rayquaza, Palkia, Giratina, Reshiram, Curum, uh, what's his name? Uh, the other, the other Curum, Black Curum. Um, oh wait, no. What, what is that Pokemon's name? Zekrom. Uh, yeah. So there are a lot of dragon types. Is my point. Uh, and it's it's very hard to compete when your type is that sa oversaturated. I think that the electric one will probably end up being more viable. For one, it's not intimidate fodder um, if it is a, a special attacker, and and two, it would have most likely access to things like electro web. Um, and if its competition is Zekrom, Zekrom is a physical attacker, so it isn't really in competition with it. They do two different things. Uh, the the issue with the uh, dragon fighting one though is that it would literally lose to like almost every other legendary uh i guess it would have a very good matchup versus groudon if it's like you know a physically defensive pokemon which it, it looks like it usually from these things you can sort of tell their stats uh, but if it is a physically defensive pokemon it goes pretty positive versus groudon absolutely loses to zacian both of these lose to zacian I was really hoping we would get like a hard zacian counter after zacian became like the hard xerneas counter uh but you know, I, I guess, you know, we can dream. Uh, one day we will get our bug type legendary with like a partial ground typing one day. Uh, but yeah, also saying to note is there's usually a third legendary. There's almost always a third legendary. So I'm pretty hyped to find out what that one is. Uh, in Sword and Shield, it was Eternatus. And then we also got Calyrex Shadow. So, you know, whatever this third legendary ends up being, maybe that'll be our sacred Zacian counter. But yeah. Uh, those are my initial thoughts on, you know, the trailer. I guess there's a few other things I can talk about real quick uh, as far as gameplay goes. It looks nice. There's four player multiplayer, so you can hop online and play with your friends in real time. Uh, it's It doesn't seem to be like the wild area where you would just see people in the overworld and they would lag behind you for five minutes. It looks like it's pretty synced up and you can probably battle your friends in the overworld and do like multi battles. Because here, something that we'll note is uh, the battle UI here versus Lechonk. It looks like they're gonna keep the uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus thing of Pokemon being able to gang up on you uh, because the health bar for Lechonk isn't on the top right where Quaxley's is on the top left. Lechonk's health bar is right on top of him, uh, which is how they did it in Legends Arceus, which was good because it helped you keep track of the health of Pokemon when they ganged up on you. Not only that, but we can see that there are multiple Pokemon in the overworld. Um, I guess my main concern is we haven't seen too many towns. I'm, I'm a little bit, I guess that is a town right there. That seems to be a town. My concern is that it's going to be like Legends Arceus, how there's one town and then the rest is wild. I'm really hoping that isn't the case. I would like it to be sort of like a Skyrim situation where you can walk from town to town, do whatever you want in between. Because they did confirm 
Yes, this is going to be a purely open world game. The order in which you explore the game is not determined by the story. You can do whatever you need to. There's going to probably be a mainline quest. Like they're going to design it like a traditional RPG. Uh, that's, you know, a traditional open world RPG. So I'm hoping that's how they do it. Uh, but I would like there to be towns. I, I don't want it to just be completely open world and you just kind of walk around and do stuff. Um, send a note. We see Shelter. We see uh, Toxapex. So shout out to the singles players. You get another you get another format of Toxapex. Uh, we have Tyranitar confirmed. We have Salamence confirmed. The regional decks, um, the regional decks format is always the most exciting in my opinion. Uh, if we look at the Pokemon centers, we see, well, it's like Pokemon stands. There's a shop, because blue is always indicated shop. Uh, there's a center, you know, you heal your Pokemon. But the right one, I think that's trading. I, but it's weird, because it's sort of like going backwards if you can't just trade from the menu. That's always how it's been. Yeah, Overworld does look pretty nice, though. It's a little bit better than Legends Arceus, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, it's not like the nicest looking Overworld, but if you can, you know, climb up that whole mountain, if you can go wherever you want to in the game, I'm fine with it. Models for the Pokemon in the overworld actually look pretty phenomenal. Here we can actually see Talonflame, here we can see um, Lurantis. I I'm actually really happy that Lurantis is confirmed for the game, because uh, Lurantis has always been a very fun Pokemon to use, especially in regional dexes. It kind of got the short end of the stick with Dynamax, because it is a contrary Pokemon, and, you know, with Dynamax, contrary doesn't really go too well. But yeah. Uh, those are my thoughts. If you guys enjoyed this video, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe, do whatever, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one.